Greetings, all of you. My dear sisters and brothers and my dear friends, and a warm welcome to every one of you. All are welcome. This is your Pastor Yeri. Together we are in Psalm 86, a heart focused on God. Our key verse is, Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I will give thanks to you, O Lord my God, with all my heart and will glorify your name forever. This verse you can read in Psalm 86, verses 11 and 12. This is kind of a verse that you have to hang on different places that you focus on those words. They are encouraging yourself the way that you have to walk. And what I always love in those verses, the walk of truth, as Jesus is telling us that, saying to us that, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And if we focus only on Him, even we have to go to a valley, a dark valley, we have to be aware that He will help us strongly to come out of it. A personal relationship with God allows us to come to Him for our every need. We have a right to bring our supplications to Him and request His grace, His strength, and His guidance. In the first five verses of this psalm, each appeal is on the basis of a related condition. The request is justified by a need or contingency. One, incline your ear and answer me, for I am afflicted and needy. You find it in verse 1. Then, preserve my soul, for I am a godly man. Verse 2. Then another, save your servant, for I trust in you. Another one, may glad the soul of your servant, for I lift up my soul to you. And I will never believe whatever happened or coming in my own personal life that God abandoned me. Even if some kind of feeling that will attack you, God is yes and Amen. God, God's word is promised to us and he never failed on his promises. However, the answers to all these appeals, which are typical of our prayers, is not on the basis of our need or fulfilling the stated contingency as much as it's on one's confidence in the nature of God. He is good and ready to forgive and abundant, abundant in loving kindness. You know the word has said to all who call upon him. Verse 5. We can come boldly to him and call upon him in our troubles. Confident he will answer because there is no one like him. He is not a distant impersonal God. He is not judgmental and punitive, putting us on a guilt trip and delighting in our groveling in the consequences of our own sin and failures. He delights in pouring out his loving kindness, his hesed, showing mercy and delivering us. In response to this confidence in God as one who is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness and truth. Verse 15. 
The psalmist makes five vows in verses 11 and 12. That should characterize our commitment and desire. And these are, one, an openness to be thought God's way. Second, a desire to walk in God's truth. Three, a heart that is focused on fearing the Lord. And fearing is not running away from God. Fear is the respect, is the honoring, is giving God the complete worship and glory to exactly know who God is. That gives you a fearing, a fearness of adoration and respect. Not running away from God. Fourth, a commitment to giving thanks to the Lord with his whole heart. And five, a vision for glorifying God's name forever. Central to these expressions is an appeal for God to unite my heart to fear your name. In verse 11, it is an understanding that all the affections, desires, and distractions that are so prevalent and constantly demand our attention should be brought into subjection and totally focused on one thing, reverence and awe at the name of God. When everything is centered on God, He can teach and guide us in His truth. And His will is what will be done in our life. Our life will be a daily expression of giving thanks and glorifying Him. That vision of God's greatness and awareness of the deeds that He has done will give us confidence beyond our personal concerns. It is a vision of all the nations one day coming before the Lord and worshiping Him. Let us pray. Lord, you are so good and readily pour out an abundance of loving kindness when I come to you in times of need. May the focus of my heart and all the concerns of my life be united to fear your name so that I will be giving thanks to you in all things, faithfully following your will and always glorifying your name. God has such a desire to come so close to you, my dear ones. <clears throat> His loving kindness goes in the deepest part of your soul. He is a merciful God. He is full of compassion. And how can we move on when there is so much going on in our own lives. And we know that life is such a busy thing to live. Getting up can, for some people, become very hard. Go out taking care of the children, your job, church work, whatever. Do you think that you're such a strong person that you can handle this all? Well, you can do it. You can work on it. And in, in some ways, you will be very successful. But why working so hard and losing track of the one that wants to become so close? My dear ones, he wants to embrace you. He wants to drag you out of a trap. 
He wants to drag you out in kind of a spell that is going on that blocks you. He wants to embrace you with his loving kindness to give you more of his understanding and wisdom. He wants to walk with you together with on your spiritual path. He wants to help to focus you on your vision, on your ministries, on everything that you feel that there is a call. And you know what a call is. And even praying. Oh, my dear ones, we need prayers. We need. So I will encourage your souls to be a watcher on the wall, to stand firm, to pray for those who are going to a spiritual battle, for those who are in need, for those who need, like, financial problems, well, name it. We need people who stand firm and praying for us, watchers on the wall to protect the spiritual battle, raising their hands for victory. This is what God is. This is how God wants to use you. Wherever you are, whatever you are working in, whatever you are as a mother, as a grandmother, as a father, grandmother, what a father and whatever, you are important. His eyes are on you. He loves you. Blessings to all of you, my dear ones. This is your past reality. Bye.